Greetings. I'm going to apologize up front for this video because I'm afraid it's going to be maybe a little choppy. I'm working on a little project today that I thought I'd like to share with you, but um, <laughs> I don't want it to be too long. So I'm going to just try to show you a little bit of steps. So I will um, try to edit it so that it's a little more concise <laughs> what I'm doing. But what I'm doing is um, I'm making dream catchers. And um, everybody makes dream catchers and I apologize if you know how to make dream catchers already and I think that's fantastic and there's a lot of other places on the internet maybe a little more informative than my channel that might help you a little better. But the reason I'm wanting to share it with you is because I am making dream catchers out of something that I have that I love and I don't want to get rid of, but I can't use it anymore the way it is, and that is a tambourine. Um, I, I know you know I'm a musician. I've been a musician my entire life. And um, particularly now when I'm doing my medieval uh, music, I, I find that I'm always carrying um, tambourine in my basket. I usually have one in my basket, different sizes. Um, I carry different sizes. and. I do normally use the kind that has a head on it. This is the smallest. <laughs> um, I use several sizes. I like the symbols and I like the double set of symbols here and I like the um, head. But um, as I usually am throwing them in my basket or throwing them, packing a lot of things over on top of them, they do get damaged. Um, we have a lot of changes of temperature, changes of humidity when we're camping, etc. And the heads split, whether they are hide or artificial or natural hide. If they're, if they're natural hide, they stretch, 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 and then they get too tight, um, and then they don't play properly. Um, or if they are artificial, they're not as strong, and they tend to tear easily. And what has happened to both of these tambourines, this larger one, the head has completely torn, and I have, I have removed it. And then this smaller one, um, it has split a few places and I have used high glue to repair it. It's been repaired a lot of times. Um, so I thought this time I would, um, I'm going to just remove the head, but I didn't want to throw it away. <laughs> I can't really use it. I can still use it, but not like I, I wanted to. So I thought it would be fun to use it as a dream catcher. But there's a little bit of a, if you know how to make dream catchers, it's a little tricky because this is not a, a just a simple hoop. This has a thickness, number one, and it has, of course, the um, the symbols on the side, which uh, may cause a problem when you go to do the actual weaving of the dream catcher. So I wanted to show how I'm getting around that. So the first thing I'm going to do, I did. I already did it on this one, as you can see. I'm ready to do it on this one, as I'm going to take an exacto knife very short exacto knife and I'm not going to show you this but I'm going to say I'm going to come around you can probably see well enough right here at the here you can see here on the one I've done that I have just gone along this inside here's the outside edge I've gone along this inside edge with my exacto knife remove the entire head and then um, made any kind of repairs that I needed to and um, Sanded it down nice and smooth, preparing it for the actual weaving. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to cut right here real fast and remove this head. <laughs> remove the head and show you then my next step because the next step is a little tricky step, which you might it might be helpful if you ever want to make it out of a tambourine. It might be very helpful. So let me let me just um, I'll cut this for one minute and I'll be right back. Okay, I've removed as you can see I've removed the center. And by the way, I don't think it was clear, but it, I didn't mention it in the beginning, but this, the, the, um, on this smaller tambourine, the, um, the, the uh, head was actually separate and had split in several places along the edge. And I had repaired it several times, but it just kept splitting in other places. So that's why I removed it. I, I realized it looked like it was okay. It was perfectly fine the way it was. Also, you might be able to see it, it had really buckled doing you know due to a lot of changes in temperature and things it had it had buckled so that's why it had to go but anyway I've cut it out and then I have a very 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 fine 
sandpaper and I'm just going along this edge because I don't want there to be any rough edges along there and I'm just going to really gently um, I, I really apologize for the angle of my camera here because I'm sort of I'm sort of being chased by the California sun. It's a sunny day today, and I'm getting in some parts of my house. It's just really too, too, too glare or too dark, and this it's just very bright in the back here. So you, I, my camera might have trouble focusing, but anyway, I'm going to be changing the angle in a minute. But anyway, I'm just going to go along real gently so that it feels so that if I run my finger. Um, along the inside of this head where the head had been I don't have any rough edges because any kind of thread will just will catch there number one and number two it looks pretty crappy so now over here on this part you see I might well I don't know if you can but where it had it has been um, where it has split I'm going to apply a little bit of glue in there and let that dry a few minutes before I do too much else. Okay. Um, I'm just using a some kind of an all-purpose glue. And I'm going to go ahead and stick a little bit of glue in there. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to I'm going to change the angle of my camera. So that I can, um, so that I can, uh, so you can see what my hands are doing rather than what my face is doing. That might be a little easier. But anyway, I'm just squeezing some glue in here, and I'm allowing it to sort of ooze out a little bit because then I can, when it dries, I can also uh, sand any rough glue down a little bit. Okay, so I just just fix that and. Um, so I'm going to do a little more sanding on that, just a little bit, get it nice and smooth. And then I want to show you the trick, the important trick if you ever want to make a dream catcher. So I'll be right, I'll be right back again. Okay, I'm back. And um, this is a little tricky part that I was telling you about that um, if you ever want to use a tambourine or something like this, um, it's not so much that it has a thickness, but the difficulty is when you are doing the weaving on this, this tambourine that you'll see I need to be able to go around completely around which is not a difficulty except I have to go completely around in places that do not interfere with the symbols okay so the two different sizes here are actually really good to show you two different ways um, if you go on uh, Anywhere, look on anybody else's, I uh, hear on YouTube, anybody else's um, how-to on how to make dream catchers. Usually they're using a flat ring and it doesn't matter. And their exact precise division of the circle doesn't really matter so much. Exactly where they're going to cross on the circle, attached to the circle. Um, it, it, matters to, it matters here in this case because of the bells. If I get off a little bit uh, because of the symbols, if I get off a little bit, it's going to interfere so I wanted to be exact so um, <laughs> rather than doing the same kind of crazy geometry well we're going to sort of do crazy geometry but not really math so what I did I'll show you how I did it two different things here uh, the first one here this larger one I determined because of the placement of the bells as you can see the bells are well that doesn't help doesn't it Here's the top, there's no bells at the top, no symbols, and the symbols around the bottom. So I was able to sort of determine about where the top was going to be in this. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna just move that a little there. Oh, is that a little better? That's a little better. Okay, so um, I determined where the, where the top was and so what I wanted to do was I wanted to use I, I, I drew a line and this is a crazy this is a square my husband had you could use anything you could cross you could just actually take two rulers I have two here like you could take a ruler this way and get it exactly centered 
and then take a ruler this way and get it exactly centered and wherever it intersected here would be the center point. But what I did to make sure, because this wasn't really an even amount, um, I took a this, this square and jigged it up. What, how did it happen? Jigged it up one here. Oh, on the top. Jigged it up on the top. There we go. I make sure this center was flat and that gave me a line that gave me this first line. Okay? So I simply marked, made a pencil mark here, made a pencil mark here. Very simple, right? And then I took and I went opposite it made sure that I was lined up with my pencil marks nice and straight so that this was straight with the jig and I did it again I made a pencil mark here and I made a pencil mark here so I ended up with four little ticks pencil mark ticks on my here you can see like I have here I don't know if you can see it but I have a little pencil tick here you know just a little line a little line because it's going to be covered with thread okay Anyway, then I used simply rubber bands. Rubber bands I just stretched on there from tick to tick and from tick to tick so that I could get to this. This was what was really important was center the center. Because I don't have, like if I want a piece of paper or I want a flat ring, I could just lay, simply lay, uh, you know, I could just use a ruler on paper. I could line up my paper like graph paper, but... Here, since I'm on this on this um, very thick frame, it works better this way. So what I did was now I have a center point, and the reason that we want the center point is now I want to be able to take that center and again laying it on here, getting another center set of lines. Another set of lines. See, wherever I move this, this is against here. That is actually going to be crossing the center, crossing the center point, and it's midway between here and here. Okay? So I cross that, and there we go and put a pencil tick and a pencil tick. It's just a matter of having where the line crosses the center. And then I do the same thing over here. Okay, so here I ended up with, I'm not maybe explaining this too well, but this is actually the easy one. I think this one is sort of self-explanatory. You don't need me to tell you. <laughs> but anyway, that's a mark here and here. Okay, so I ended up now with, um, I'm going to have, I can take this the rubber bands off and when I take them off, I will have um, one, two, can you see this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight equal distant sections of the tampering. And the most important part is each one of the parts is going to be clearing the symbols. There'll be a string here, a string here, a string here, clearing the symbols. This one's in between these two. This one is in, still in between these two. Um, in between these two, in between these two. Now they're not, this is not exactly center. That's not important. It's exactly centered between the bells. What's important is it's, it's centered with the center of the tampering, with the, okay? And it's clearing. So just as long as it clears it, it's fine. Okay? So that's how to divide it into eight. Now on this other one, it's a little trickier. On the smaller one, on the smaller one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take um, I'm going to make a, first of all, the top, this one is a little different. It has a little hole at the top. That's my, um, actually, it's a, it's actually, it's a hole for a thumb hole. It's supposed to be, no, it's not. I don't have a head on here. I guess it's supposed to be for a thumb hole, but I don't usually use it for a thumb hole. But anyway. Um, it has a hole. That's going to be the top. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did here. I'm going to take this square, this, uh, 
and I'm going to take it down through the center. I'm going to try to divide the center of this. If it will work. Midway. See, however I put that. Because what I may mean for you with this one is I can't do eight. As you can see, I can't do eight. Because I have a different amount of, see, I have a different amount of symbols. I have sim symbols, so I can do, I'm afraid I'm not explaining this very well. Um, I, I can do, there's one, two, and then I can do this in thirds. Three, four, five, six, that way. Okay. So, and I can't just do it this way and divide those in half. I have to get this, I have to get the first line. And I want it about midway between, let's say it's about there. There's midway between. Let's see if that will work. And wherever that is, it's over here. So I have midway, there's my tick mark. And then, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to make the square just like I did, except I'm not going to make, I'm not going to put a string there. That's just for my reference point because what I'm trying to find is the center. My husband has tape on this because he's working on a loom for me, <laughs> uh, which is behind me here on the windowsill. And uh, anyway, I want to try to get a center okay so three so this would be the center here oops I put that there this line will show me the center the perpendicular line and that it's perpendicular on my, I'm trying to get the lines through it to um, remain perpendicular. There we go. And I will put this here. This is just for the rubber bands. And you can see right away, if I tried, here's my, here's my tick mark. And if I tried to put a, a string around there, look, it would interfere. So that's why I can't do eight again. I'm going to do six. You can do any amount. You can do any amount around the circle, but, you know, it's just, uh, it'll make a little different pattern, that's all. So anyway, that's only for my perpendicular line, okay? Def I mean, to find my center. So I'm going to take my rubber bands, put it on the tick mark as, as straight as I can get it. Again, remember, this is just to find my center point. And this is going to be tricky because I'm going around a bell. It doesn't matter right now. But it's going around the bell. It's just... The center point is what I'm looking for. This point. Okay? Can you? I hope you can see that. If I put something behind it, will that help? If I put white behind it, does that help? No. Ah! That's worse. Okay. Anyway, this is the center point. And now what I'm going to use is compass. <laughs> Remember these? And what I need to do is find the radius. So I'm going to screw this down, make it smaller. And the radius, remember, is the distance from the center to the outermost. And I'm going to go here, to the outermost to the center. See that center point? Right here. That's what I needed. And I'll check it by going to another one. And that's right. Now check it. I just want to check it to make sure I'm pretty centered. And there we are in the center. And here we're in the center. Okay? So that looks good. So now what I'm going to do is from this outermost 
from my top. This is my top. I'm going to swing my compass. I'm going to make a tick mark here. Like I was making an arch and a tick mark here. Okay, tick mark here. Swing it around, tick mark here. It would it would cross there. Then I'm going to go across to the other side. I'm going to make a tick mark here. Swing it around, make a tick mark here. Okay, so now if I take my rubber bands off, here we are, starting from the top. Remember, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to ignore this one. Maybe I can erase that because that was just to find my center point. I'm gonna erase that one and this one. Because that was just, remember, the perpendicular line to find my center. So here's my top, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six points equidistant around the circle. Oh, I was turned. I'm sorry. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six equal points around the circle. Okay? That's important because on both of these, this one has eight. Eight points. We'll count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this one has the six. And those are the places on those are the places on these tambourines that the string is going to go completely around the outside attached to the tambourine. Okay? Oh Duke. Duke. Duke 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 Duke. Duke. Come here, Duke. I'm sorry, I'm I'm boarding dogs and I have a dog that has just discovered a kitten. Duke. Oh wait, okay, I'm gonna cut here, just a minute. Oh wow. <laughs> um I have this I hope this is going to work. <laughs> I have um re-recorded the second half of this the second piece of this uh, video now I don't know three four times so I don't know if I'm, I'm coming or going to be honest <laughs> um, but but truth be told I realized no matter what my camera angle no matter what my background um, weaving in the small tambourine which was what I was going to do was really not conducive to recording um, it, it's hard to see it was hard to see what I was doing, and um, I kept taking it off. Part to be honest, I kept taking it, taking it out, and redoing it because I wasn't happy with it. That's why I had to keep stopping the tape and changing a little bit of my method. And I realized that that method was maybe a little too hard to share. So um, with that, with that thread, and, I, and I'm going to tell you what I did. I'm going to show you that one is complete. But I'm going to show you on the bigger tambourine how to do the actual weaving. So. So don't go away if you want to do it. You gotta, you know, stand by me here. I'm trying. Um, I did. I want to just review where I was. Remember that I had taken the heads to make sure I edited this properly. Um, I had taken the heads out of both of the tambourines. They were damaged. Um, then I had smoothed with using some fine sandpaper, smoothed around the edges, and using some glue, making sure everything was tied down. And then I was determining my marking, and I used a couple, a combination of a couple tools. Uh, in one, I used a a square, which I could fit against fit against the tambourine to hold it secure, securely. And using that, a combination of that, and a a ruler. You can't see it; it's clear, but it has grid marks on it. I could find a perpendicular. A perpendicular to that so that I could find the center point of the tambourine which I, I located using rubber bands okay along those take lines okay then I said in this in the large tambourine I also then took and got 45 degree angles using the jig again measuring 
finding the perpendicular again with the ruler it passes through if I can hold this up passes through that center point if you can see that that's the perpendicular line to get my other marks so I have a combination I now have eight one two three four five six seven eight marks eight marks around my my large tambourine and I can take the rubber bands off now and then I had six tick marks recall up around the small tambourine which I could only do because it was much smaller in size number one but number two the bells the placement of the bells okay that would have been perfect and I was ready to show you um, how how to do that when I was going to do the small one and I was using this is 5 2 weight cotton thread which is about the weight of a you know you can get crochet cotton um, in, on smaller spools in like a craft store or a fabric store um, you can use any kind of thread, any kind of yarn, string, I don't mean thread, but you know, we call this thread, but it's actually more like a cord, more like a cord. Um, I buy it in these big ones because this is what we, I weave with this, so we call this actually thread. <laughs> um, but it, this was what was difficult to see, as you can see, you could hardly see it, it, it was just too small. So, but anyway, to use that, I did use it on the small tambourine, but I remember I had the six marks on there. But then, when I went to weave it, um, my, my, my loops were way out here. Because of the thickness, I didn't take this into consideration. I think it's because of the thickness of the side of this tambourine. Um, I couldn't really get close enough the edge and so I really only had room in that tambourine for just a couple rows and that wasn't going to be that wasn't a couple rounds that wasn't going to make me too happy so what I did was I went back and revisited that little tambourine with the six tick marks and I went and made in the halfway through midway through each of those six I made another one so I had a total of 12 now what did I do for my the little remember the little symbols on the edge well I could show you on here very easily. You see these, something I didn't really consider, that the tambourine, that the symbols are in this little cutout place. And um, so I was able to take my thread on either side of this, you know, I could put it in here and it would, and it was it was thin enough that it would not interfere with the, with the symbols. So that's what I did. I'll show you my finished dream catcher. Um, I have it laying here. It's been drying. I have a little glue on it just on the bottom, but on the feathers. I added some feathers. But anyway, I have, um, I put some, well, let me show you. And then I'll show you how to weave this. Okay, I don't know if you can see, and of course you can't because of the glare. But then if I hold maybe this paper towel behind, you can see the black thread. And here you can see how it goes around the outside of the tambourine. And in some places, like here, I only wound it to here. So it didn't get too close to the tambourine. Here too. So that the tambourine, so the symbol still could move. You see that? Okay. So anyway, I, I wove that using the 12. You see now I have 12 going around. I had a little nice little thing, and then after I did a couple rounds, I added some little pearls, and then I hung this little medallion in the middle. I don't know if you can see it with the towel or without. It's a little carved. It's a green man. Uh, it's meant to be worn as a, as a pendant. My husband bought that at a spirit fair a couple years ago. I think he meant to wear it. He did not ever finish it. <laughs> he never did, and he gave me permission to use it in the dream capture. For right now if I ever want to I can always redo it and put another something in the middle but I thought that was really nice because uh, again I don't know if you can see it better the paper towel was of course white on white or maybe if I put my hand behind it you can see it better there you go it's really lovely and then on the bottom of the um, 
Dreamcatcher, I added, here you can see maybe, uh, I had some more, I hung some threads at the bottom, and I had some of these wooden beads, and then I had some of my beautiful feathers from my, just my hens, which I always have. I collect like this. <laughs> I collect and I keep this on my altar all the time, and when I find some lovely feathers, I put them in here. And I use them for all kinds of things, but they're also just on the, on my altar. But anyway, um, so I thought they would be lovely on the dream catcher. So that's that. And I, I'm going to hang that up. <laughs> I'm, I'm allowing the glue. I put it, I, when I attach the feathers here on the strings at the bottom, down here, I add a little dab of glue to the bead to hold the uh, feather on. I just want that, make sure that's good and dry before I hang it. But you'll get to see it again. You'll see it hanging up. I'll try to get a shot of it another time. Um, hanging above my altar in the office. My new prosperity altar for 2017. Okay, now I am going to really show you. Um, oh wait, I want to show you one trick. In case you ever want to use this cotton and you want to try to put beads on it. Um, first of all, there are two different ways to do that. And again, if you would go and look um, on videos on here on YouTube, you'll see a lot of different methods, but some people load all the beads that they think they might want to use on their string. You just pull off a, you know, like a length of, it really doesn't matter how long it is, you know, long enough that you think you can make it the whole way around, but you can always knot it. Don't worry, you can knot it if you run out of thread, out of string. You can always knot it, but... Um, I determined I was going to use 12 beads in mine, and I um, loaded them all on the string at once. And that way, I then you just, as you go around, you drop two beads, and then wherever you want. And other than drop, if you don't drop them, you just push it through, like the like the uh, with the rest of the thread. And I'll show you when I when I weave. I'm not going to put beads on this one. I have a totally different, totally different idea for this one. And you will see this again finished, but you're not going to see it finished today because I want to save it for the surprise where I'm going to where I'm going to put it. But anyway, I did want to show you one little trick. You know, when you have these, I had these little pearls, these tiny little pearl beads, and the hole was really small, and it's not much bigger than the thread. So, a little trick I use, which again, you probably knew this. Anyway, I don't have to tell you, but is I have some of this um, beading wire. Huh, you can't even see it. Where's the container? Here's the container. Beading wire. Um, soft flex beading wire. It's uh, it says diameter 0 0.019 inch. It's 49 strand. Doesn't matter. Ah. Uh, it doesn't matter what the brand, but it's very, it's thin enough that it bends very easily. It's almost like a, you know, it's flex wire. So when you, when you, the reason for it, when you make a necklace or something out of wire, it flexes like it's on string, but it's strong like wire. So I cut a piece of that, bend it in half, and I took that, those ends of my, whew, of my uh, wire and put it through my bead. Again, I don't know if you can see it. Put it through the bead. And then leaving a little loop. Leaving a loop. So I can take my string, put it through the loop. Ah, my thread. Whoa, oh, geez. Put it through the loop. Slide it through. Pull the beading wire off, and my bead is on my string. And it, like I said, it can go wherever you want. Load them on there. You weave with this. You weave with this end. And as you want to drop a bead, you pull the bead. Leave it there before you go on. Um, I think you have to do it to see, but I'll, I'll try to explain. Okay, so I'm going to reposition my camera because this time I'm going to use. I'm not going to fool around with that thin string because you never will see it in a million years. And I thought, especially for this tambourine, this large tambourine, I decided to use crochet uh, cotton. What is this? 
This is a uh, cotton yarn. Of course it is. Cotton yarn, 100% uh, worsted weight cotton yarn. Here's the package. I got this at, oh, you can get this anywhere. You can get this at Joann's, you can get it at Walmart, you can get it at uh, Michael's. I buy it all the time because I make a lot of things out of it. One thing I make out of it is I knit uh, dishcloths all the time. All my dishcloths, I use them for potholders, dishcloths. Uh, I give them as gifts with my homemade soap as washcloths. They're very lovely. My grandmother always knitted hers and I still have some of hers and I have her little pattern and I use them. So I buy this in all different colors. So I thought that would be easier for you to see. <laughs> Then this little skinny little thread. So, anyway, I, you just pull off a bunch. And then you roll it up into a little little bunch so you can hold it so it doesn't go everywhere. Like when it, when it gets smaller, you can it can go everywhere. It won't matter. It'll still work. So I'm going to try to reposition the camera and see if I can show you how to do this. So I can move ahead from this, move on from this video, which is like the most difficult video I've ever ever done okay I don't know why anyway I'm gonna re I'm gonna stop I'm gonna reposition my camera and I will be right back okay I have changed my camera I hope this works I um, hope you can be able to see it I think on the table you can see it um, you start with your little uh, ball of yarn and you're gonna take it I don't know if you can see my tick marks but it doesn't really matter I can see them and you're just going to tie a knot on your first mark. It doesn't matter. You can start anywhere because they're the same. It doesn't matter. You're going to know where you started because it's just going to be a knot. Okay? So I, I just tied a knot, simple knot there. And then this is the whole stitch over and over again. So I'm going to go, I'm from the outside, I'm going to go over, take my thread over around and up through the middle and I just make a loop and I keep it on that keep it here on the tick mark and I turn it I will hold this up in the air once I get going but I'm gonna hold this tight I'm gonna go around and come up from underneath through the loop and as you see it makes a little bit of a, a loop there we go going to my next one Around the bottom, up through. It's a little difficult when I'm out here at the symbols. I keep wanting to catch the symbols. Okay, can you see what's happening here? Do you see what's happening? I don't know if you can. Yeah, you see. You can see the. You can see these uh, sides out around the outside, up through the loop. Well, I hope you can see that. You see what I mean? When I was using that little black thread, there was no way you were going to see that. Now, again, if you really want to do this and you can't understand my video, I'd appreciate it instead of hating on me because I'm really trying to, to be honest about this. This is not the purpose, really, is to teach how to do it. I'm just trying to share some fun little thing I'm doing. Um, but I think I've been really upfront about, you know, just go on YouTube. There's lots and lots, and I watched lots and lots of these before I decided how I wanted to do it. As a matter of fact, when, when I did the smaller tambourine, I didn't use this as considered a knotting stitch, even though it's not a knot. But I did not do that in the interior of the weaving. I just looped it, looped it, looped it, and I did that only at the beginning of each round. I secured it. But this one... I'm going to secure it every time. So I keep going. This is my last tick mark. And you see here I am back at the beginning. This is my thread. My little knot is here. You can see there's my thread. Okay. So I'm going to go and do one right at the same place. Okay. So that's double. Get that nice and straight. Yes, I can. And then, so I have gone the whole way around, and I have, can I, can you even see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight sides. I had eight tick marks and I have eight sides. Okay, so this is going to make a little different kind of a pattern. Now, as you can see, can you see here up, up here, I'm holding this, I'm holding it in place. I'm holding it tight until I make the next stitch. It, it'll, it really won't come undone, but it, it just makes an extra job. If you keep it as tight as you can, keep a hold of it. Okay, so here I'm getting ready to do the exact same thing, but now I don't have a tick mark, so I'm going to go halfway. See on my first side, here's my first side. I'm going to go in the middle. I'm going to push the yarn down through. So the yarn goes down behind it. And then I'm going to bring it up. And there I made that loop again, right? And that just made a double. I don't know if you can see a little double thread here. That's on the first side. Now I'm going to go to the second side. I'm going to hold it here. Take my yarn over the top down behind and up through the loop and then pull that and look at that I made like a little triangle can you see my triangle so I go on to the next side I hope I'm turning this right so you can see I'm going to hold it here to keep it in place this is my side take it down behind there and up through the loop pull it another triangle can you see that Turn it around, hold this tight, take it in through here, over the top, through the loop, pull it, another triangle. Look at that! And see this slides along here, so if you get in the wrong place, you just slide it. So like a lot of times when people are making these online, you'll see they don't even make these tick marks. They just eyeball, you know, like equidistance, and that's perfectly fine, that works really well. Again, if I did not have the symbols on the side, I might have done that as well. You know, but I sort of like to have things. <laughs> Let's be honest. I'm a little bit anal about certain things, so. I, will, I like to have it. Uh, I like to start out even. Okay, so here I am to the next side. I'm going to push the yarn halfway through. Maybe behind the bullet through the loop. Adjust it so this halfway through. And I'm going to keep going. Keep going. Next one. Right down behind. See, I don't have to. Once I got around that original out here in the tambourine, I'm never going to go around that again. See, I'm all my work is now inside. And you could probably get an idea, since I'm doing this, why I didn't have, why I had such trouble. The first one with only six sides, that this space was so wide on that uh, first one without, with only this few. Because you see, that's a pretty good distance. This is my last side that doesn't have anything on it. I'm going to go down behind it, come up through, and then I'm going to go back to where I was the first time. Right here. I did that the first time. Go down behind and up through. Okay? And there I have it, my first time around. Can you see that? Does it help if I have a white cloth behind it? I don't know. Well, I know that makes it worse. Um, I guess it works on the table. Okay, so that's my round one. Let me get a drink. <laughs> Which way do I go? Oh my, I act like I've never made, you know, I think it's important to make videos in different ways for all of us because we get so set and do everything like the same all the time that like, we get kind of stupid. Okay. Yummy tea. Okay, so I've gone the whole way around. I'm back to where I started. Did one there. And now, the next place to go is since I went halfway through, remember I went in the middle of the next line? Now my hexagon, if you can see, one, if I put it down, is that easier to see? It must be. Now my hexagon from my finger here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I still have eight sides, don't I? Just like I had. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. But instead of putting it midway through this side, I'm going to put it mid midway through the next side coming up. Okay, I'm never going to touch these outside cords again. 
So I'm going to go halfway here. So I go behind and then I go make the loop. And that one's going to make a double string just like that one did. You won't see the triangle until I get to the next one. Okay, so my next side is here. I go down behind and up through the front. And then I get that halfway, turn it down behind, up to the front. There's a triangle. Do you see my triangle? Oh, I hope you can see this. Here's my next side. Go down behind, up through, pull it tight. My next side, down behind, up through, pull it tight. Here's my next side, down behind, up through, pull it tight. Here's my next side, down behind, up through, pull it tight. One more, down behind, up through, pull it tight. And then I have to go to the same place that I started here after the double cord. See the double cord is here? I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to go down in that exact same place, up through. So my loop will be right on top of where it was. And now look what I have. Can you see? I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little triangles. And I have now my hexagon is in for one row in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides. <laughs> Oh, I hope you can see this. This is so fun. When you finally figure it out, it's really fun. And I have to tell you, I'm sort of inspired because I'm looking at all of these uh, videos trying to figure out how to do it. Oh, my goodness. Some people make these out of hula hoops. Gigantic ones out of hula hoops. Oh, my goodness. That might be really fun to do for outside. So uh, that's something fun. So anyway, you just keep going like this the same way. Now, again, I'm not going to put beads on this one. Like I did, but if I was doing it, you can see if I had beads, this is what I want to show you. If I had my beads, my beads, I would be keeping them up on this end with the with the bundle. And that does get a little awkward until you're ready to um, drop the beads. But you just go slowly and it works. I suggest you make one, a practice one without beads first. Because it's so much easier to see how to do it without the beads. Um, but anyway, if I wanted a bead now here... Or two beads, I would just put them here before I go to make my next stitch. And then they would stay on this side, you see. You see that? You just can put them where you want them. And some of the prettiest dream catchers are made with just random beads. Like anywhere they felt like dropping a bead, they did. They didn't have any pattern. Like mine sort of had a pattern to it. Here, let me hold it up again. I don't know if you can see it, but mine sort of had a little pattern to it that I used. Uh, Two be I dropped two beads at a time when I did it initially and then I went in and and went in between those beads the next row but you don't need to do that that's not necessary okay so I'm going to keep going I'm going to do another row and see how it looks and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put a medallion hang a medallion in here I don't think I'm gonna keep going I am going to decorate this and I'm not going to tell you how I'm going to decorate it yet because I really want you to see it when it's finished, um, what we're in its finished location as well. So, because that's sort of a whole other video, <laughs> I haven't gotten to it yet. But anyway, um, you will see this again, I promise. Okay, let's go again. Here's where we left off, and I've been pulling it, holding on to it tight so it doesn't go anywhere. And I'm going to go on this side and down here. See, I'm going in that little triangle, and I'm coming up through the loop, and then I'm halfway through. And I pull it tight. And there you see now I have a double string. That's just the way it, it looks. Don't be worried about that at all. That's what it's supposed to do. Okay. And then I go in the next line. Next side. Down behind. Up through. Okay. Turn it around. Down behind. Up through. See, my hands are so big, I feel like I'm really causing you problems. Can you see that? Okay, down behind, that's inside that little triangle. Up through the loop. 
Can you see me doing that? Oh, I hope so. You see that? Well, I wish you were talking to me so I could, you could say, get your hand out of the way. You're doing it right. I can't see what you're doing. Here we go. But again, look at somebody else's video. Somebody who knows what they're doing. <laughs> These DIY videos, you know, if you don't do them all the time, you just don't think about it. Because um, I'm looking at what I'm doing here and I'm not looking up on the screen to see what you can see. That's my problem. And it's very easy, you know, to see where you started because of the double thread. When we get to it. See, we're not there yet. We have this one yet to go. And look, now we can see the double thread. Can you see that? Here was double thread, here's double thread. So we go want to go to that place. That's where we were last. And you can tell if I before I go to make the stitch, if I just pull this over like that. You see how I'm completing that triangle? That's what we want to see. So you get used to looking at that. And that's where we want to be. So here's where we go. Up through. There we go. Now let's check to make sure we're right. I'm always checking. Triangles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight sides. Eight ticks, eight sides. Okay? With a nice hexagon in the middle. You see, this is making a whole different kind of a pattern. It's hard to tell, but it's really pretty, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to go again. Because I'm having so much fun. Now, after remember, after here, let me get a drink. I should show you I'm drinking iced tea. So you don't think I'm a lush. Okay. So, after I have... I did one more what left off. I'm going to go. I'm going to stuff it down in here. See, it's sort of coming undone. That's okay. I'm going to stuff it in there and bring it up through the loop. There's a double thread that indicates where I start. And I go to this next side, down behind and up through. You know, of course, when you're, I want another little tip when you're working with uh, thread or string of any kind that might tangle. Just go slowly. If you go slowly, you have time to catch tangles before they get, you know, as long as they're loose, they're going to be okay. It's when things start to get, you know, when you're pulling too tight. Like I'm leaving this, oh, look, I have my little end here. Down behind, up through. And when it's nice and loose, it's not going to knot. Okay. Am I going off the screen? Oh, see how bad I am? I'm so sorry. I hope I'm going to get a lot of hate comments down below. I mean, I understand it if you really hate it, but... <laughs> I'm apologizing, like, if I can't apologize anymore, then I'm apologizing now. So, don't hate on me. Okay. Down below. See, it doesn't matter if I use the end or the middle. As long as the thread, all this stuff get, goes there, it goes there. And that's what you have to do when you're using beads. You just have to, they just have to go. Okay. I'm still, I haven't gotten back where I was yet. Remember, I'm looking for that double string. That's how I know where I was. That's where I know where I started. One more. See, here's the double string. Can you see that? Here's the double string. So I have this one to do. This, this side to do first. Through. 
and then remember where am I gonna go back would I go back here no because then it wouldn't make a triangle look at that so I have to go to this one then it makes a triangle do you see that again if I went here it would not make a triangle if I went here it makes a triangle that's how you know where to go in case you lose your in case you're starting to lose your mind like I do that's a little way to check where you are. Okay. And there as we go, that's where we started. Oh, and look at that, let's count. Okay, from my finger, how many triangles do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many sides do I have from my finger? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I'm doing it. I'm so excited. Okay, I could still go some more. Look how much we have. Now, if I wanted to hang something in the middle there, I could. But I'd really like to go further. So, I'm just trying to keep, you see, I'm trying to keep this nice and loose so nothing's going to clump. Anything that I can stick in there will work. Any part of it, so. I go to the next, I go to the first side. Um, you know, at this point I could, no, I don't want to. I was gonna say I could change and you start using a tapestry needle, but it's really more trouble than it's worth. I think my finger works just as well. Okay, so halfway through, and remember, look at that, I left that double thread. Remember the first one is always a double thread. So we can find where we're going when we come back. Okay, then I go into the next side, which is the bottom of that triangle. That's why we care about the triangles. I go inside the triangle, behind the bottom, up through the loop. Okay, here's the next triangle. I'm gonna go down in there and up through the loop. Boy, I'm sorry about my hands. I got the biggest hands, I know. Okay. Okay. Am I moving that out of the way? I don't know where to put my fingers. Okay. Down behind. And up through. As you get near the end, see so putting just a couple strands to, in the loop is the way to go. Because it keeps, it's very thick. So I go down behind, up through. That works better. Okay, turn it. In the triangle, in the bottom of the triangle, down behind that thread and up through. And what I'm doing is, I'm just pulling that little, not so much. I just want to remember halfway through. Halfway. Okay. Here we go. Down behind. Up through. Boy, if you're not interested in making this, this is turning into a pretty dull video. So, I want to say, well, I'm just about done. Here we go. One more. One more and I'm back to where I started. Down behind, up through. Halfway, remember? And 
and then I go to remember here we are at the very end of this row where do I go I go I don't go here because then I wouldn't make a triangle I have to go here that would make the triangle the same place so I go down behind where I started and up through Whose fingers are too fat for this? Mine. And there's the triangle. Okay, now let's check. Let's check. Okay, let's count triangles first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight triangles, and now sides one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off just for a second because you don't need to see me finish this, and then I'm going to, I'll come back and you can see my face, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you the very end what I did at the very end. Okay, I'll be right back. Well, that was the longest day. <laughs> Actually, it was two days. I don't know. I gotta change my clothes. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> longest day. Anyway, um, oh, I got, I, here's, here's what it looked like when I finished it. And I noticed, you know, if I hold it against my black shirt, now you can kind of see it, right? And you maybe can even make out that little blobby blob, blob, blob right here. Blob. That's a blob of glue <laughs> that's wet. It'll dry clear, but I have a knot. When I finished it, I just knotted it and cut the thread, and then I put some glue on the knot to hold the knot. But you can see, starting of that knot, you might be able to go around and count um, clockwise. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight triangles you might be able to see. So I still have an inside. It's just sort of wonky, but it's still a... <laughs> it's still a... Uh, it's still a um, octagon, octagon, eight sides, octagon. Um, I was so into sex. I, I was so into hexagon with the with the tambourine when I was talking about that for three days, which you didn't hear me, but <laughs> that I might have inadvertently called this a hexagon as well. This is an octagon, eight sides, which you know that not that big of a deal. But anyway, um, this is just the beginning. I'm gonna. I like the yarn though. The yarn came out really nice. Symbols. Symbols are still intact. Very nice. And uh, I kind of like the colors. You know, the variegated yarn doesn't, it's not that brilliant. But anyway, it's kind of fun. It's going to really be fun when I'm finished. Um, oh, and it goes nice with my glasses. <laughs> um, it's going to be nice when it's finished. When I get it all embellished and show you what I do with this. Uh, it'll be in place. I'm gonna, then I'm gonna put it in its place and then you will see it. The next time you see it will be then. Anyway, oh, I, I, I don't know. I'm gonna try to edit this. I think I have, I think the best way to edit it is just to throw out the days and days and the min, all the stuff in between that I kept trying to redo. And I hope my beginning makes sense with my middle and my ending. I hope they make sense together. Anyway, again, um, if you do, uh, if you want to leave me hate, go ahead and leave me hate. I, I can take it. But um, what I'd really love is if you could, if you make a dream catcher or you have made dream catchers, if you could share those with us, that'd be really fun. Because I think they're really fun. They look so fun. And they're perfect for, for summer coming up because we have our windows open. I think everybody does. And, you know, think of long naps and having some naps in the hammock or wherever. It kind of reminds you of a hammock, doesn't it? A string hammock. Anyway, um, anyway, I'd love to see them. Love to see them. I'm rambling now. I don't know how to stop recording now that I've been recording all this time on the same video. So, <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for being patient. Um, I hope you guys have been on this. I don't know. Anyway, thank you for coming to my channel. As always, I am the good wife, Rebecca, and I wish you blessings.